Hi everyone, uh, my name is Amir Salafur. I'm with the Nutrient Management Sphere Program and today my talk is on impact of matter management on greenhouse gas emissions in corn of alpine grass. It's very important to know that these are three different experiments. As we go on, and we're going to call them experiment one, two, and three. I think we all know that in U.S. agriculture is responsible for 9% of greenhouse gas emissions. Of that, 44% is from nitrous oxide emission followed by methane and carbon dioxide. And of that 44%, agricultural soil management is responsible for 75% of it. So our main focus is, is nitrous oxide, but we're going to show data on methane and carbon dioxide. In dairy farming system, fertilizer management practices, such as source, rate, and application methods, are important, critical, and can impact our crop yield, quality, soil properties, and greenhouse gas emissions. For our corn study, I'm going to focus on source and rate, and for our pulp and grass studies, I'm going to focus on application methods. And I'm going to start with the, with the corn study. And I'm going to give you a brief introduction why we started this study. So we apply manure basically based on the nitrogen needs of the corn crop. That basically, when you apply manure based on the nitrogen needs, you over apply phosphorus and potassium compared to the crop removal. That can cause agroenvironmental issues such as high K forages with excess K and high phosphorus in the soil that cause uh, phosphorus run. A potential alternative can be shifting from N-base to P-base management with tillage incorporation. That tillage incorporation basically conserves ammonia from being lost and provides nitrogen for a corn crop. So with that, or in, in our objectives were to evaluate the shift from N-base to P-base management on corn grain yield, soil test nitrate, and nitrous oxide, methane, and carbon dioxide. We conducted a study in a uh, Musgrave Research Farm in Aurora in New York. The soil texture is calcareous soil seed loam. The soil baseline at, in 2014 at the uh, top 20 centimeters or uh, 8 inches is uh, basically as follows. The pH was 7.5. The organic matter was 33 gram per uh, kilogram, or 3.3%. Or Morgan extractable nitrate, phosphorus, and potassium were 5.1, 9.6, and 82.6. For the US audience, 90.6 is equivalent to 19.2 pounds per acre, and 82.6 is equivalent to 165.2 pounds per acre. Based on uh, phosphorus and potassium guidelines in New York, these two values and numbers are considered as high, high levels. Our experimental design was a complete randomized block design with five replications. We had six fertility treatments, two rates of composite dairy, dairy solids at 34 and 90 megagram per hectare for US audience. 34 is equivalent to 15 tons per acre, and 90 is equivalent to 40 tons per acre. We had two rates of liquid dairy manure at 93 and 160 kiloliter per hectare. Again, 93 is equivalent to 10,000 gallons per acre, and 160 is equivalent to 17,000 gallons per acre. The low, the low numbers are our P-based managements. The high numbers are our N-based managements. We had two inorganic N rates, 0 and 112 kilogram nitrogen per hectare, which was citrus. Basically, that's equivalent to 100 pounds per acre. That, that basically or, or estimated nitrogen needs. And it came from a long-term study which where we had uh, nitrogen rates from zero to 250 pounds per acre, and that was our optimum end rate. We had a starter, at, uh, basically we applied a planting, 112 kilogram, 
Sen 2020 and P205 and K2O, K2O in your organic parts, and 280, 1020, and P205 and K2O in your inorganic parts. Okay? We collected data for greenhouse gas emissions. We had like 32 rounds of sampling. At each round, we had we uh, monitored soil moisture and soil temperature. We had soil, four soil sampling times at, at the baseline before the start of the experiments, at planting, side resting, and harvest. The depth was 0 to 20 centimeters and 0 to 30 centimeters, except for a planting, which only had 0 to 20 centimeters. And we harvested corn for grain. For greenhouse gas flux measurements, we basically used a static vented chamber. We followed Graceland protocol uh, written by Arkin and Mantra 2010. We had one chamber per plot. Uh, we sampled more frequently when we applied manure, fertilizer, and when, when we had rain fall events. Uh, we had four, four samples per time. Uh, we had time zero, 15, 30, minute 45. And we calculated plugs by linear regression. Okay, we are in the results section, bump up. Before I start, I guess it's gonna be easier for you guys to follow if I say that for compost, plugs are, are shown in blue color, or manures are in green, and the red is our not inorganic fertilizers. So the darker colors are M-based treatments, lighter colors, colors are P-based nitrates. Okay, so this is a trend of nitrous oxide emission over time in corn. And we basically we saw very little emission or almost small, almost zero in the beginning of the study. After manure application, we saw basically two peaks and one of them coincided with the major rainfall is, it was almost two inches of rain. And then and then we had smaller peaks with the after uh, inorganic side ap application of nitrogen. And at the at the end of growing season we almost saw not, no no emissions. So in the next slide I'm gonna focus on each of these periods and we're gonna look at the treatment differences there. Okay. This is, this is basically uh, nitrous oxide emission after manual application. You can see a trend is toward the higher emissions from N-based treatments compared with the P-based, although they're not statistically significant. And the emissions were low in your inorganic fertilizer treatments. Go forward, this, this figure shows uh, nitrous oxide emission after major rainfall events. We saw higher emission in N-based compost and P-based compost, although not significant. We saw similar emissions from P-based manure with N-based manure, and emissions were still low in your inorganic treatments. Probably the reason for that, no difference in P-based <coughs> manure and N-based manure, was due to the soil nitrate trend, and you can see the high, high nitrate in P-based manure, probably due to the conservation of ammonia from being lost that, that is showing there. So basically, we, we can say we reduce ammonia volatilization, but it's kind of showing there too. If you look at the moisture content, you can see beautifully fits with our, with our emissions. We have nitrate, we have emissions, perfect combination for denitrification, the major pathway for nitrous oxide emissions. And this figure shows uh, nitrous oxide emissions after side dressing nitrogen. And we can see now we have very low emissions in our, in our organic plots and zero end control, and a lot of emissions in our high rates of inorganic nitrogen. Finally, this is a cumulative nitrous oxide emission. High rates of emissions in high rates of inorganic N and N-based manure. And you can see a trend of coming, basically nitrous oxide is reducing as we come from N-based manure to P-based compost. We thought, okay, maybe 
we gotta look at the corn yield versus nitrous oxide emission. See if there is a trend and we saw a linear trend. I mean, this is a one year data. Um, maybe we should not draw a conclusion or something like that. But what we're seeing is that there is a linear trend. So basically, if you shift from your N base manual to P base manual, you're losing three, basically four to five percent yield, but your nitrous oxide emission will reduce by 29 percent. If you shift from N base compost to P base compost, you're losing around 3% yield, your nitrous oxide emission will reduce by 43%. We were thinking, okay, may, so whether yield is driven by nitrogen or emissions driven by nitrogen. So we got this question, and this year, basically, we split it or, or plots, or organic plots into two, and we are looking at Cybers in nitrogen in half of it to see if it's a nitrogen related issue or not. The, this, is the, this figure is the trend of methane emission in, in a, in, during the growing season. It's a bit messy, I know. <laughs> we saw some methane emissions and uptakes in our uh, after manure application and major rainfall events. After that, it was mostly made an update or consumption. I'm going to focus again on, on after manure application, major rainfall, even on post inorganic nitrogen citrus in, 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 in next slides. So, methane emission after manure application, we saw a difference between the treatment, between the sources. N based compost showed basically methane emission while the P-based compost showed <coughs> methane uptake. It was not the case for manure and organic N and, and and basically statistically they were not different. Methane emissions after major rainfall events, all of them showed methane uptake basically. These values are negative basically so we are not emitting something, it's coming down from atmosphere to the, to the soil. And we saw we saw higher methane uptake with our P-based management and lower in organic air rate. And we saw no differences between treatments in methane emissions after cytosine and nitrogen. Okay, the cumulative methane emissions were all negative. So so we have the methane uptake. You can see that the P base was was more had more methane uptake than N base, but no differences between the manure and uh, inorganic nitrogen. And this figure shows the carbon dioxide emissions over time. Emissions were low in the beginning of the growing season. As we go forward, the soil temperature increases. We, the crop was growing fast, and we had, we had higher, basically, emissions in the middle of the growing season. And, and it, as we go toward the end of the growing season, the emissions were, were lower. If we look at the cumulative carbon dioxide emissions, we, we saw no differences between n base to p base compost. Although we saw we saw a trend, trend to be higher in N base. In manure we, we saw higher emissions with the N base manure than P base and, and it was not significantly different in, in, in higher in organic N versus zero in control. Okay, our preliminary conclusion for 2014 was that okay, shifting from N base to P base, three percent yield loss for compost. 43% less nitrous oxide emission. Shifting from N base to P base manure, 4% to 5% yield loss, and 29% nitrous oxide emission. <coughs> if, if you shift from N base to P base in compost, the same yield loss, but you have 53% more methane uptake. It's not the case for manure, so you lose yield and you have less methane uptake. Okay, we're done with the corn. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to all fall fine grass.
So let me tell you a story. It's, it's, it's getting common to inject manure to alfalfa and grass and hay crops, basically. It's great. It has these advantages. Reduced odor, conserved ammonia, and reduced N and P R. But the, the problem is that sometimes injection can make mechanically damage the roots and that cause yield reduction. So we said, okay, maybe we better look at, look at that. And our objective is to assess impact of manure injection versus surface application. And then we want to see, we want to look at the crop yield, slow test nitrogen and, and nitrous oxide, methane, and carbon dioxide. Okay, so that we had, we had four treatments, six, six replications. The treatments were surface applied liquid air manure at 37 kiloliter per hectare, which is equivalent to 4,000 gallons per hectare. We had injection with liquid air manure, the same rate. We had injection, no manure, and no manure. That, that treatment is to look at the mechanical injection without the impact of the manure to see if really we're going to have yield loss or not. And that, that unit we got from ARS in Pennsylvania. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so we applied manure in, in grass and in spring and fall, and in, in alfalfa only in spring. We collected the samples basically very close, similar to our corner study, only in, only in one round of alfalfa we had to use an extender, as you can see in this picture and we added a time 60 for flux measurements. We monitor soil moisture and soil temperature as, as we did in our corn, soil samples at each cutting, and, and we hand harvested the crops. Okay, this is, this is the trend of nitrous oxide emission in, in alfalfa over the growing season, and you can see two, two peaks. Five days after manure application and at, at the major rainfall events, and, and the peaks were fairly small throughout the growing season. If you look at the soil nitrate, soil nitrate was, was higher in the beginning of the growing season, and you go forward, it's going down and down. And that, that, that sold a moisture content at, at the major rainfall events. We, we, we saw that, that bit. This figure shows our methane emissions during the growing season in alfalfa. This one less, less messy as the other one. A lot of methane uptake. And if you look at the cumulative methane emission, you can see the trend is toward higher uptake with the surface, basically the manure applied plus compared with no, no, no non-manure plus. Looking at the carbon dioxide emissions, the trend, I think it's a fairly aesthetic trend, except these, I think these, these happened when we cut the alfalfa. And if you look at the cumulative carbon dioxide emission, the trend again is a bit manure plots compared with no manure plots, but they're not as statistically different. Look at the alfalfa dry matter yield, which we were very interested in. We saw no differences, basically, in, in surface apply versus injection. They showed exactly almost similar yield. Going to grass, <coughs> this is the trend of nitrous oxide emission in grass. During the growing season, we saw a big peak after manure application, but really nothing at the major rainfall events. We applied manure two times to grass, basically. In fall, it's interesting. We saw two basically fairly similar peaks, but the way they behave is a bit different. We got the peak for injection a bit later. 
that's the nitrate trend for grass. Again, similar to alfalfa, it was higher in the beginning and going lower as we go forward with the growing season. And the cumulative nitrous oxide emission shows that, okay, there is no difference between surface versus injection. High, higher emissions for manure plugs compared with no manure plugs. Look at the methane emission during the growing season. And that's basically, that's, that's what we missed in here and in alfalfa and in corn. We did not go exactly one day or fairly at the, at the same time that we are talking about. You miss that day and it's kind of, you're going to see nothing after that. We did that this year. We went after application and in corn we saw a huge peak of methane with our end base manual during that. So, if you look at the cumulative methane emission, now we have methane emission, so methane uptake because of that. The only only treatment that shows methane uptake, but no manure emission, no manure application. If we look at the grass, carbon dioxide emission in grass, we saw a very similar trend with the with alfalfa. And if you look at the carbon dioxide emission, cumulative carbon dioxide emission, again, higher carbon dioxide emission with the manure plots, but there are basically no differences between manure and non manure. <coughs> so, our preliminary conclusion for grass and alfalfa study manure application increased yield, but nitrous oxide emissions as well. No differences between injection versus surface application. And manure application increased in methane and CO2 emission, which actually is because of or what we saw in your grass, basically, study. And I believe we missed it in, in our buffer. And this is the overall, basically, conclusions of what the whole three studies. Again, shifting from N base to P base. You have 3% yield loss, 29 to 43% less nitrous oxide emissions. <coughs> emissions and yield are, are linear co correlated. Is it, could N be limiting? For experiment two and three, alfalfa and grass, we saw higher yield with manure application. We saw higher emissions with the manure application but we did not see any differences between injection and surface application for, for yield production. And injection itself did not impact emissions. With that, I would like to thank our sources of funding, Sustainable Dairy Project, or known as Dairy Cap, Federal Formula Funds, and Atkinson Center for Sustainable Future.